Okay, we're rounding out the chapter four with rational and irrational numbers. And basically what we're doing is looking at what we call the real number system. And we've been dealing with rational numbers since the beginning of the year. We've had integers, fractions, decimals, both repeating and terminating. And those are all what we would consider rational numbers because they are a number that can be written as a fraction. Both the numerator and denominator are integers. And remember, we can't divide by zero, so that's why I put that little reminder there, that your denominator cannot be zero. And then just to give you a little background, the word rational came from the word ratio. And a ratio is just a comparison of two things. So if I had um, three cupcakes for every five slices of pizza, something crazy like that. We wouldn't want to eat that much, but that is a ratio, comparison of two things. So as if it can be written as a fraction where the denominator and numerator are integers, we would consider that to be a rational number. So let's look at some examples. So what the chart has, it first listed as a number, and then it shows how it can be written as a fraction and then it answers the question if it's rational or irrational. And that's part of this section is just identifying what number is if it's rational or irrational. So five, we know we can write that as five over one. So yes, that's a rational number. This is a terminating decimal that can also be written as a fraction. This would be one and 75 hundredths. And then you could change it to an improper fraction. So that's rational. This is also a terminating decimal where it's one thousandths with a th, so it can write it as a decimal, or sorry, as a fraction, so it meets the criteria of a rational number. And then this way right here, this is a repeating decimal. So another way you could see this is 0 0.1 or one tenth repeating. That would be one ninth. So that is a rational number. But what happened is a long time ago, people came across squares that had sides of one and one. And so, and we'll learn about this a little bit later with the Pythagorean theorem. So you have side length of one, side length of one. Well, they couldn't figure out what this side was, or sorry, what the diagonal was. So that is actually a square root of two. So it didn't meet the, cat or the criteria of the rational number. So they had to call it something else. So if it's not rational, it's going to be irrational. So an irrational number is a number that cannot be written as a simple fraction. And it includes non-repeating and non-terminating decimals. So one of the key clues that you should look at when you're identifying if it's a rational or irrational number, one, if it's a repeating, or sorry, if it's a non-repeating and non-terminating decimal, then you know that it's going to be irrational. But you gotta be careful, especially when you're using a calculator because it might show that it's terminating, but it really isn't. And we also, the key clue that I like to mention is it's a number that is not a perfect square. So let me show you some examples. So here I have the square root of two. If it was the square root of four, that's one of our perfect squares because this is the same as the square root of two squared. These cancel each other out and you're left with two. Because remember, square, taking a square root of a number that's squared is undoing it, just like adding and subtracting our opposite operations. So this guy right here is considered an irrational number. This guy is also considered an irrational number. Pi is one of the most common ones that you see, and it's, we usually estimate it at 3.14, and I'm gonna put my little squiggly line here, but it really goes on and on and on and on and on to infinity. So that is definitely a non-terminating, and it's also a non-repeating decimal. So that's 
irrational. And then this one right here, we don't necessarily see a pattern. And so if it had 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 2, then we would see a pattern, but this is not repeating. So this is also going to be what we would consider an irrational number. And that's all you would have to say. If it gave you a question like this, it would have, like, is this irrational or irrational? You just write it's irrational, non-terminating decimal, and non-repeating. Okay, but this one right here, if you saw this and you remember that it's a perfect square, then you would label it rational. Okay, so that's what some of your problems are going to be like. So together, calm down. Okay, you're going to be able to pause the slide and draw this in. The real numbers contain, let me see where my cursor is. Let's see if it's, oh, there it is. Oops, it's not moving the way I wanted to. Okay, the real numbers contain rational numbers and irrational numbers. Okay, that's what makes up what we call the real numbers. And you're like, okay, well, if it's not real, what is it? Well, just kind of like your dreams are, it's not real, so it's imaginary numbers. And you're going to get into that in higher um, math. So it's pretty exciting stuff. And hopefully you'll think fondly of your seventh grade days. Okay, so what um, we have here is the whole numbers, okay, include zero in our positive counting numbers. The integers include our negatives. And then our rationals, we have our fractions. They also include the integers our negative um, fractions, mixed numbers that change to decimal. Now I put this one in here kind of like a little trick though because not all square roots are irrational. So this one right here, if I was to simplify this, this would be the square root of 25 over the square root of 49. Square root of 25, that's the same as 5 squared so these guys cancel out. And the square root of 49 is 7 squared. So these guys cancel out. So you're going to be left with 5 sevenths. Okay, so now I'm in that um, rational form as a fraction. And again, here's those example of irrational numbers. So it has to be one or the other. But the clue is to see if it's a perfect square. If it's not a perfect square, boom, it's irrational. So here's another example. The square root of seven, not a perfect square, it's irrational. The square root of eight, not a perfect square, it's irrational. Square root of nine is rational because I can change that and that's gonna be three. What about the square root of 91? That's irrational. Okay, so you've got to just um, look to see if it's a perfect square. If it's not, automatically label it as irrational. Okay, so what I want to look at is comparing and ordering real numbers. So our real numbers are both rational and irrational numbers. So if you notice, I can list them. I can place them on this number line. And this number goes off to infinity this way, and this goes off to infinity that way. And in between each number is an infinite number of numbers. So I'm just going to add this little square root right there. But I like this one because it shows that you can have decimals, improper fractions. Um, this is an irrational number. This would also be an improper fraction that you could change to a decimal irrational. This is also irrational. It's called Euler's number and you'll get to that later. Don't worry about that right now. And then you have your pi that we've already identified. That's, that is irrational. So one of the first things you're going to be doing is comparing. So you're going to be looking to see if it's less than, greater than, or equal. So let's take a look at this. Four fifths is that less than or equal to the square root of 4 over 5? Now, what I would do is change this 4 fifths to a decimal. And off to the side, you could do that top dog in the house. So 4 jumps off. He's on top. 
of five shoulders and he goes run in the house and he's at the door. So I have to add a decimal and it's five goes into 48 times. So this is gonna be a terminating decimal. So this is gonna be 0 0.8. And then what I would do is um, you can use the calculator for some of these, especially um, with the ones with the decimals and like if it was the square root of seven to find it because it would just take you way too long to try to figure that out. We're going to be focused most, mostly on the perfect squares. So what I did is I put this in a calculator and the square root of eight, or sorry, eight tenths is this. And it went on because it was it's an irrational number. So this one was a terminating because it's irrational. This one was irrational. So if I look to see the eight's the same, the eight's the same. Oh, this is a zero next to it. This is a nine. So I automatically know that this one's going to be greater. And the next type of problems is ordering from least to greatest. So go ahead and write these down. So you notice that they have this repeating bar. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just write out the numbers um, a few more. So this would be 0 0.13 is going to be repeating. Okay. And I probably don't need to go any more than that. There's my little dots. And then this one is going to be 0, 131, 131. This whole thing is getting repeated because it has the bar all the way across the three numbers. So it's 131, 131, 131. And this one, these two are going to be repeating. So it's 131313, one, three, one, three. dot, dot, dot. That means that it just goes on forever. So, but it has a pattern, so they're rational. So what I want to do is look to see which one is different. Okay, So the ones are all the same, so that's not going to help me out. Cross them out here. Okay, and then we did that one. And then the three is next, so that's not going to help. Okay. Now I have a three, I have a one, so those are different. Oh, but then I have a one here and I have a three. So I have two that I know are going to be to the left. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the ones because I know that those are less than three. So let's just compare these. So I'm going to look at the next number. Maybe it's one and three. So this one right here would be the least amount. So I'm going to go ahead and just rewrite this down here. And then this one's going to be second. Now I need to look at the next one. So I have a three here. Next to this guy is going to be a zero because this was a terminating one. So three is greater than this one. So this one would be next. And then I'm going to have zero. One, three, repeating. Okay, so again, um, the section is going to be dealing with identifying rational and irrational numbers and ordering and comparing the real numbers, which include rational and irrational numbers. All right, see you in class.